Okay, well, if Republicans don't get their act together pretty soon, can they capture a majority in the Senate and win back the White House? Joining me now is Sean Spence, uh, Spicer, excuse me, Communications Director for the Republican National Committee, uh, Dana Lash, who is a talk radio host and Tea Party activist, and Matt Welch, who's editor in chief of Reason, and he's also author of the book, The Declaration of Independence How Libertarianism Politics Can Fix What's Wrong with America. Great to have all of you guys here today. And Sean, I know you're Sean Spicer. I know that anyway. But let me start with you. Republicans are fighting right now, particularly in the House and Senate, over whether or not to defund Obamacare, even if it means shutting down significant portions of the government. Good idea, bad idea? I think in general it's a good idea. Our party is united. Uh, as far as getting rid of Obamacare, we recognize the fact that more Americans are losing their health care, costs are going up, and the problems continue with, with the implementation of Obama. What I think we have a robust difference on is the tactic on how to make that happen. Some people believe that we can defund it through the continuing resolution process. Some people believe that you're not able to do that because of the way that the funding is structured in terms of mandatory spending. I think if we can get resolution that, that it can be done, I think most Republicans agree that we should defund it. But there's a, a healthy debate as to what is the most effective way to do it. Um, and, that, and that's where the breakdown occurs. Everyone wants to get to the same place. It's just how to get there. Dana, a lot of the Tea Party people have sort of drawn a line in the sand and said if they, if they don't vote uh, to defund and even tie it to whether it's debt ceiling or the budget itself, then they're rhinos. Is that right. fair? Well, you're going to find a lot of varied opinion within the grassroots movement. Uh, but it, generally, people want to see the Republicans take some sort of stand on it. The, the general view is that, well, if they're not going to stand to defund it when the time comes to repeal it, if that time ever comes, how will they well, well, they definitely won't stand to repeal it then. And so there's this, I think there's this lingering general distrust that the grassroots movement has, no offense, Sean, that the grassroots Untaken. movement has with the, the Republican Party on this, because there's a lot of things that they feel that they've kind of compromised on before. And whenever it comes to the discussion of compromise in Washington, D.C., it's always, it seems, Republicans who have to get up, give up the most. Democrats have to give up the least. So is I think that, they're though, trying to fight that. Is that because the Republicans only have one half of the House? I mean, they've got the House, right. but they don't have the Senate. They don't have yeah. and that's uh, just the White it. House. I mean, the fact is, you know, you've got to own all the moving yeah. parts if you want to call the shots, right? Elections have consequences, and that's why when I hear some individuals, and they do, I mean, we had three million Republicans that just didn't go out and vote yeah. this election. I mean, we lost swing states by just a couple of hundred thousand votes. Those were votes that we could have gotten. We could have we could have won those states. So yeah, elections do have consequences. We don't control the Senate, so we can't sit here and demand that we're going to have a repeal because there's no way we're ever going to get Harry Reid to to go along with anything like that. So Matt, uh, do you feel like the Republicans ought to have a showdown here and and uh, you know, sort of their own version of the OK Corral? Well, as the non-Republican at the table, uh, you know, I, I think the problem is you can't defund uh, uh, Obamacare. You can't. Uh, you can make a fight out over. It, but you can't. And if you get to a position where you're going to, it looks like that Republicans or a group of Republicans are going to shut down or threaten to shut down the government, they're going to lose a public relations battle. That's just the math. The media will hammer them to death. The polling isn't good on this right now. I think what you'll see is a move towards delaying. That's what Grover Norquist is talking about right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, let's, since we're, Obama is already just sort of saying, ah, let's delay that part and that part and that part of Obamacare. Let's delay everything for about one year to allow you to build a politics towards it and to kind of get to a position where if you win the next election, you'll have something to talk about without going to this precipice of shutting down yeah. government. And, yeah. and I don't know that a lot of people would be opposed entirely to that sort, because it seems like an Overton window kind of approach to me. Let's propose the word, let's propose, you know, just burning it down, so to speak, you know, not literally. Uh, and then if we can't get that, what, what best tactic helps us to at least move the ball a little bit further down the field to our advantage? You've seen, you've seen the House under Speaker Boehner vote 40 times to defund or delay Obamacare. The commitment is there, but as Dana pointed out, and and Matt and you, we have one house of one branch. Mm -hmm. We're doing everything that we can. I think if we want to do this, we need more pieces, as you put it. Let's get out in this next election, get us a Republican Senate, and start to take another piece off the board. Uh, the commitment and the will is there. We just need the, the ability to make it happen. But if the Republicans implode over this, I mean, if they really get to the place where they start calling each other names, like you're not a real Republican, you don't have any guts, you don't have any courage. That's always going to happen. Then the, yeah, but I know, but, but doesn't that affect our ability to win? 
again, get the Senate back next year? Not necessarily. You don't think it I does? I think that not doing, not be, being perceived as aggressive is what's going to hurt us and not getting back the Senate. I mean, we are statistically, that could happen. I mean, you even have Nate Silver saying that it could happen, which I don't generally want to, but he's right on this. Yeah. I mean, he is. Uh, the bottom line is that if you look at what, there's been three polls released in just, what, the past four or five weeks, the majority of Americans, there's a Fox News poll, what is it, like 57 some odd percent of Americans still super unpopular. It's unworkable. They don't think that this is, they, they just, they want to see it defeated in any way possible. Other than that, it's Welcome possible. back. We are back with Sean Spicer, Dana Lash, and Matt Welch. Matt, uh, you saw in the very opening of the show, uh, Chris Christie sort of saying, you know, we got to work about these libertarians. Are libertarians a threat to the Republican Party? There is a very interesting and legitimate philosophical fight going on within the Republican Party, within conservatism right now. It's not new. Rand Paul didn't invent it. Chris Christie didn't invent it. It's been happening systematically since 2009, uh, beginning really with a Tea Party election of 2010, when we saw so many insurgents supported by the Tea Party go against the Republican establishment and create this sort of new breed of political character, like your Rand Paul, like Justin Amash, Tom Thomas Massey, Ted Cruz, all these people kind of emanated from this tradition. There is a fight over, are you actually serious about cutting government, or do you just say, like Mitt Romney does, I'm going to cut your taxes, and I'm not going to tell you a single thing that I'm going to cut at all in the government while we boost defense spending and protect Social Security and Medicare, right? That has been conservatism under unified Republican leadership in Washington. It's not popular anymore, that thing. And so there is this fight, and there's a fight over uh, how much you want to limit government, and there's also a fight over how you want to conduct and talk about foreign policy. Those are legitimate huge differences of opinion Republicans got to fight it out but uh, Sean let me ask you is, is that an issue that Republicans are fighting about or I mean the libertarians do have a party there is a libertarian party they have presidential candidates should should there be a point at which to say look if you want to be a libertarian there's a libertarian party and and that's that's where that discussion belongs of course there, there's a there is a separate party for it but I think there is a strong home for these people in the Republican Party. We are a party that generally comes together on lower government, less regulations, lower taxes. So a lot of the issues that libertarians fight for, those principles, there's a huge home for them in the Republican Party. They make us a better party. Uh, they have helped us win elections. And I think that we, you know, that we, we would welcome more and more of them. And I think that that debate is a healthy one to have within the party. It's, it, it gets a little rough, though, when the primaries end up becoming mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the most conservative of them all? And, you know, the fact is there may be a slight bit of difference between a Republican and another Republican. Right. But the, the damage done among Republicans sometimes makes it hard to win the general election. So, Dana, how, how do we overcome a healthy, robust debate without destroying each other in a circular firing squad? That's a great question. And as neither a libertarian nor a Republican, and definitely not a Democrat, I mean, there's, there are a lot of grassroots So what folks. are you doing? I, 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 my, t my, my tactic, my strategy is to vote, and I think this is, yeah. goes for a lot of grassroots, is to vote for the most conservative candidate, the most limited government, most re fiscally responsible candidate who can win win in a race because in order to storm the castle you have to kick your foot in the door so that's sort of the strategy that I look at um, in terms of the fighting between the libertarian faction and the Republican faction I love the libertarian uprising because I think it's helping prevent the con word conservative from being co-opted uh, but at the same time there's gonna we're never all gonna agree 100% on everything that's never going to happen I would rather try to accomplish the 80% on which we agree and then we can fight like crazy over the 20% after we've won on that 80% that's what we need to be telling individuals because the 20% that can wait but this 80% that's what the country is going to live and die on. That's what's going to be deciding the future for our children. Uh, Sean, would you do me a favor? Please tell Ryan's Priebus that I agree and appreciate the stand he's taken, uh, that if networks are not going to have a fair uh, moderator to moderate the debates, and if they're not going to you know, run these puff pieces on Democratic candidates, then the RNC is not going to send the Republican candidates out there. Having been a part of that in 2008 with people like Chris Matthews, who is about as non-partial as me, uh, it is absurd to think. I mean, if they ask me to moderate a Democrat debate, then fine, let Matthews moderate a Republican debate. That ain't going to happen. Listen, thanks all of you. Wish we had a whole lot more time.